For more updates, click on subscribe and click on bell button for latest notifications. Hi friends, welcome back to Tech ARK IT YouTube channel. My name is Ravi. In this video session, we are going to see types of bond interfaces in Linux. So basically, what is bond and how many types of bond you can create and what is the use of them? What is the advantages when you create the bond? So all this stuff you are going to learn in this video. Okay, let's see this. Um, sorry that like um, I had a, some workstation issues. So that's why I did not post any video on the last month, but um, we'll continue from here. What is bond or bonding? what is it first of all so let's see that uh, in linux bond interfaces also known as a network bond or bonding uh, allow you to combine multiple physical interfaces into a single logical interface this provides several benefits such as increased network redundancy improved network performance and uh, load balancing how it looks like it looks like something like this. So you have a two physical interfaces, which is called uh, ENP 9 S 0 ENP 10 S 0. So these are the two physical uh, network cards, which are connected on the server. Like these are connected to the network switches. Then um, top of that will create a uh, logical interface, which is called as an A bond zero here so this is a bond zero and um, here we'll add a bond zero as an a master and we'll add these two as an a slaves and we'll have one active active or active passive what are the those types based on the requirement so that's how we configure so what happens in case in case of your one physical card is damaged or so it is a electronic devices are the any time it might damage or fail or whatever it is right so then it might fail then you don't have an interruption to your services to the whatever the services you are providing to the customers you don't have any interruption basically it's a use of bond so you can combine maybe a two or four more than that minimum of two to create the bond so that's what um, it actually increase your redundancy like if it is fails then another reason a standby mode or active active mode or something like that then both can work it together or one can be an active one can be an passive so once fa one fails another is automatically redirect the traffic without any interruption so that's the major major of the bonding and what the bonding do so top of this we'll have this bond zero is in a logical interface so this has all the uh, ip interface and uh, ip details and everything so that uh, you don't need to actually type to any of the physical network so uh, if if you replace the card here then you just have to update the uh, mac details over here so that's all so it will be on the bond interface let's see what are the advantages by doing this let's see so one thing is the increased network redundancy. So bonding provides the redundancy by combining multiple physical network interfaces um, into a single logical interface. So that's what we see is a bonding. If one interface or a cable fails, for example, network cables may fail or interface may fail, but system can continue using the remaining interfaces. So ensuring that the network is available to the uh, customers who are providing you so improved network re reliability so by having the multiple physical interfaces in a bond uh, you reduce the risk of downtime so that's the uh, maybe it's due to a hardware failures or it might be a particular like critical environment whenever you have so it will be an uninterrupted services you can provide to the enterprise network so that's the um, improved network reliability and load balancing example if one interface have the um, load then the load sharing can happen between the another interface as well so that it can provide you the throughput if if one interface has a bottleneck in providing the performance or the load then other can add its um, 
contribution to that so that uh, the load balancing can happen and uh, you will have the uh, increased uh, IVO so or the the increases the network performance and increase the bandwidth so depending on the bonding mode what bonding mode you use can effectively aggregate the um, bandwidth uh, of multiple network interface so that's the um, increased bandwidth and fault tolerance fault tolerance is like um, you can use as a active backup or lacp mode something like that so then what you can use so if um, cable fails or interface fails or uh, traffic can be seamlessly switches to the backup inter interface so that's the uh, fault tolerance is essentially for machine, machine critical applications example you have a two interfaces uh, one is an active and there is a backup so if active interface fails then the traffic seamlessly switches to the backup interface and it's continuous to provide the services or the uh, bandwidth on that uh, particular interface the backup interface so that meantime you can replace the um, backup interface then again both comes in um, so another is high availability bonding contributes a high availability by ensuring continuous network connectivity it's commonly used in uh, setups where constant uptime is mandatory uh, like such as a web servers or database server so if the web server is up if the database is down then there's no meaning of web servers running because all the most of the web servers content is um, posted on the database servers so that's the uh, critical environments and high availability you can choose dynamic load balancing it's like more like uh, adaptive load balancing if you uh, choose like uh, it actually uh, adapts the balance between the um, current network conditions and distributed traffic accordingly so cost effective scaling bonding can cost effective way to increase the network capacity without uh, the need for expensive single high bandwidth network cards are switches because if you buy a single high bandwidth network card then if it is fails there is a single point of failure but if you buy if you want example 2 gbps connectivity then you can buy 1 gbps 1 gbps it makes 2 gbps for you but if you make 2 gbps 2 gbps 2 so it also makes um, more than that so easy of maintenance because whenever you have a um, it basically not required to have the downtime so it's a hard swappable cards most of the times like cable replacement or interface configuration changes can be performed without um, interrupting the network services that's the major thing so optimized network traffic so uh, sometimes if you see the network errors or the drop drop dropping on the networks or the packets anything so other interfaces can contribute to that uh, so in like where um, administrators to prioritize the certain types of traffic over the specific interface so this is a beneficial scenario like where real time or the critical traffic needs uh, dedicated resources like example why services some kind of uh, boxes if you configured on the linux machines right then uh, those um, networks require the dedicated um, traffic the critical traffic because it if it is drop the voice then you cannot understand the other persons or you your voice cannot be understood to the other persons right so that's um one thing and flexibility like linux bonding is in a was versatile uh, offering different bonding modes to suit various network requirements administrators can choose any different modes right scaling and virtualized environment like bonding is commonly used in virtualized environments to provide the network redundancy and increased bandwidth for virtual machines it ensures that virtualized workloads remain highly available uh, and performance so so that's the um, basic advantages the bonding advantages like increased and improved network reliability, load balancing, increased bandwidth, fault tolerance. So, so there are so many advantages. Let's see what types you have. So how many types you have. So there are like uh, so many types um, 
uh, right now so let's see what are those so mode 0 basically whenever you configure the network interface with the mode 0 which is called as a round robin mechanism round robin mechanism is simply like one user can go to the interface one other another user goes to the interface two so um, use case of this one like useful when you have the multiple network connections and wanted to distribute the load evenly so that you can uh, do the round robin between the multiple cards so that it's evenly balanced networking network traffic to the both the interfaces so they can evenly solve uh, mode one is basically active backup Active backup is nothing but an a uh, one stays active, another is in a standby. Like if active interface fails, then the standby interface stakes over and becomes active. Uh, so where use case if you provide the network redundancy suitable for critical systems where uptime is crucial. So example, if one network interface is failed, still there is no downtime to the system because the still another backup interface becomes an active and the network continues to serve. Mode 2, so which is called as an a balance XR. XR mode balances traffic based on source and destination MAC addresses in, in specific cases. So uh, restricted environments example. So I wanted to have some source list and destination MAC address list to ensure the traffic for a particular MAC address always traverse the same interface. So some rare cases um, often used in environments where network devices expect traffic from a specific MAC address. So like example, you configured certain a critical scenarios like example, which is used in mainly for um, um, like environments, air and defense uh, kind of environments like because um, they don't want to have any security threats or so uh, they particularly configure some kind of um, interfaces source and destinations and the MAC address known MAC address details uh, to allow from the particular network so that's 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 what uh, uh, it provides the more layer of the security um, as well as the the uh, particular configuration to um, allow the traffic so that's that's one kind of security as well as the um, balancing the traffic broadcast so this is the mode 3 which actually provides the um, broadcast so all traffic is sent over all interfaces it's mainly used for monitoring or debugging purpose and it's not recommended for a normal network operations because um, sending a broadcast to the all the interfaces which is not at all recommended in a production environment kind of but most of the times like uh, if you want to uh, hit a monitoring space right example whether the interface is responding uh, how the it's receiving the packets and all so you can just put the broadcast and monitor them or send some debugging packets to that so that's all it is used and uh, limited practical use cases uh, mainly for diagnostic purposes and uh, mode 4 which is an uh, LACP link aggregation control protocol uh, this mode uses a LACP protocol to dynamically negotiate and create a bond it requires support from a network switch of course you have to enable the uh, the LACP mode on the network switch port as well and you have to allow the uh, sometimes trunk ports and allow the uh, all the VLANs on that particular switch uh, the port which you configured for the name LACP mode so that that's what uh, it allows otherwise if you did not configure the LACP on the network side if you try to configure on the Linux machine it fails basically it does not understand whether the port is LACP mode or not uh, ideal for combining multiple links for increased bandwidth and redundancy when you have a managed switch that supports LACP so that's the uh, L3 layer switches is may basically required to have the port management on the switches so that's where this LACP but most of the production systems uses LACP environments um, mode 5 which is a balanced TLB 
which is called adaptive transmit load balancing this mode balances outgoing traffic based on the current load and the speed of network interface example this is basically used in a streaming environment like uh, suitable improving the outgoing traffic performance while maintaining incoming traffic on a single link example if you are uh, broadcasting a stream the video stream right then um, you wanted to um, send outgoing traffic continuously so in incoming traffic might be less because uh, there is most of any outgoing traffic when you stream from the outside of the system so that's the majorly used um, mode 5 uh, mode 6 it's similar to a uh, balanced tlb which is called mode 5 but also balances incoming traffic by actively responding to arp requests offers a more balanced approach for both incoming and outgoing traffic so this is most of the um, types so how we can add type or modify the types uh, in your configuration so you can use uh, from centos 7 to the more than uh, what are the operating systems you have uh, something in the latest operating system you can use the nmcli commands so which is a network cli network management cli command uh, connection and type uh, type is bond and the connection name which is a name, virtual interface name um, you have to provide and you have to add the physical interface options here so if name what are the if name we have to add here then the bonding options so here if you say active backup which means an active backup method um, where you use uh, for active method and back, uh, backup method or maybe you can change it to um, lscp mode 4 or something like that right so there are so many other interface uh, options you can change it so media interface um, media independent interface mii monitoring interval so that's the um, mmi mon which is called in a uh, monitoring uh, interval so if you set a active backup how many milliseconds it should watch uh, so the interface is active or not how many milliseconds within that it should respond uh, so that the network cannot be dropped with uh, within that so if the network is dropped within that milliseconds it will actually triggers that active backup method and uh, backup will be active and active will be a backup method so these are the modes as I said, so mode 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so mode 0 balance R R. So instead of this active active backup here, you can change this mode. So balance X O R, balance R R, broadcast mode, which is not recommended for any uh, anything. So um, you can use this 802.3AT, which is mostly required for the production systems. Uh, balanced TLB requires autonomous ports and LB. So these are all the configuration methods and adding times. So that's what uh, uh, the video all about. So you can know what is bonding, bonding types, and how many interfaces you have, and types of interfaces, the bonding interfaces, and how you can configure them uh, here. So that's overall the video all about. I hope you like it. Um, if you like it, hit a thumbs up. Uh, please mention the comment uh, how you feel the video. So please subscribe to the channel and also share with your friends and family so that they can also learn along with you. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Please follow us on social networking site. Uh, one is uh, Facebook. The Facebook page name is uh, at Linux ARKIT. Uh, you can click on this button here and click like page so that you can follow us on Facebook. The next one is Instagram. Uh, Instagram name page name is ARKIT.co.in. Click on follow button to follow me and. Uh, Twitter, if you have any questions on uh, subject line or if you have anything, you can just tweet me at a ravikumar 48 So I will reply you most on the tweet back. For anything related, if you want the latest articles 
on my website so here is my website details and email address details you can reach me over here 